uh, my best friend in the whole world, a guy I've been friends with for as much of my life that I can remember, he recently got married, and he asked me to be the best man at his wedding, and yeah, that's a, that's a great honor, but it was so terrifying to me at the time. And this was before I realized I I have problems. I have an anxiety problem that needs to get dealt with at some point. But still hasn't gotten dealt with. Go figure. But, uh, so when he asked me to be the best man of his wedding, it was a couple of days before the wedding. And I was fine with that. But I thought he was going to come and get me and take me down there. So I was like, okay, that's fine. This is one of the few people that I'm not nervous around. Or at least extremely nervous. I'm still nervous around. I'm nervous around everybody. That's just something people have to get used to. Uh, but So, he wasn't coming to get me. It, he had a friend of his come to get me. A friend of his and uh, his brother. Which I knew his brother. We weren't exactly friend friends, but we knew each other, and that was good enough. I think that was the one little thing that kept me from losing my mind. But when I knew this guy was coming to get me, I was sitting here thinking, Oh my god, this is... Ah, terrible, terrible, scary. <laughs> I, I can't really be really screamy right now, normal, but, uh, so I knew this guy was coming to get me, and I'm like, it's so hard to explain, unless you've dealt with this, you can't really grasp it, you can't grasp the caliber of the fear, just, I, again, I was sitting right here in this couch, rocking back and forth, thinking, I gotta get out of this. I can't do it. I just can't. And this is why I tell everybody, I was more nervous than the groom at his wedding. <laughs> but I'm sure that wasn't true. And I'm just like, I have to get out of this. I can't do it. There's no way. And I was sitting here seriously considering telling him, make. I was going to make up an excuse like, uh, I'm sick or, uh, pretty much anything. I think I am sick was the most prevalent one that I had. And but I I didn't. And that was because well this guy's my best friend. I haven't seen him in a long time and he's getting married. This is a very special occasion and it's quite an honor to be a best man at a wedding from what I hear. So just that little thing right there, that little I guess you could call it hope. <laughs> I don't know. But I was... That's what kept me from saying, I can't make it. And he told me when I got there, he was really glad I made it. I, that I was able to come and support him. Because... A lot of people that he had invited didn't show up, and that was kind of heartbreaking to him especially on s such an occasion. But yeah, I did go. I had a good time. And when I got home, I was really happy I was home because I wasn't around strangers anymore. Yeah, there were a lot of strangers, by the way. <laughs> Which, it's really weird. Complete strangers to me are okay. If I don't know somebody, it's fine. But the second I sort of know somebody all the way up to being friends with them, it's this snowball effect. Like, at first, it's just a little bit of anxiety. It's like, okay, I'm going to see this person. It's fine. But then it continues on to, what are they going to say about me? Are they talking to their other friends about me? Are they saying that I'm a good person? Are they saying they hate me? <laughs> Which is completely illogical, and I'm fully aware of that, but I still can't help but have those thoughts, and 
I've found no way to tone them down. And it, it just progresses until eventually I'm terrified of any interaction with the person and I just cut off communications with them. And I hate that I'm that way. I would really like to have more friends. I really would. Because I enjoy entertaining people. But it gets to this point where I can't do anything without thinking they're going to hate me. And I guess, in a way, that does sound really selfish. It sounds like I think I'm the most important thing in the world, but I really don't. I know my place in the world. I know I'm just one person out of however many billion there are. And, yeah, I don't know. Uh, and that's what makes the internet such a great place for me. I can be anything I want to be. I can... I'm free to be who I am. I'm free to say what I want to say, do what I want to do. And the only judgment I have to put up with is from complete strangers. And you know who... I don't really care about the opinion of so much complete strangers so the internet's just kind of in a weird way the internet is my version of heaven which I'm not a religious person in any way shape or form but if I believed in a heaven that would be it the internet would be that <laughs> that sounds so weird now that I'm saying it again but yeah, anxiety is a real thing, a real problem, and now that I'm talking about it like this, I realize it's not as easy to explain as I thought it would be, but I have more stories I can tell, I have more experiences to share, and if you ha have, have, what the hell, if you have anxiety issues, then Hey, tell me about it. I can try to help you through them. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to sit there and just feel this indescribable fear. So, yeah, talk to me. You know, all that good stuff. Oh, and also watch my other videos. Like, comment, and subscribe. But, uh... <laughs> but, yeah. Uh... I have some more stories to tell. Uh, namely... Stuff from my childhood... I guess, maybe not so much childhood. Uh, huh. I guess when anxiety really started to set into me, really started to become a problem, which, back in school, obviously. Uh, so, back in school, like any child, really, I had to put up with bullies. And being the quiet kid who never talk to anybody, would never even remotely think about trying to provoke a confrontation, I thought that was really unfair. Because I thought I was a decent person in school. So, but I guess that made me an easier target, because I wouldn't fight back. I, I never got into a real fight, a real fist fight. Uh, and I'm glad slash not glad about that. <laughs> I didn't have a huge problem with bullies until late middle school all the way through high school. And it was about that time that my anxiety started to set in. and I didn't realize it's anxiety. I just thought, I'm a shy person. It's okay. Everybody's shy at this age. So yeah, late middle school all the way through high school, I was fat. I'm still fat. I accept it as a fact of life, and, you know, I don't really care. But yeah, like anybody, I'd get made fun of for it. I'd get picked on, and, you know, that was fine. I mean, I was always really self-conscious. That's the word I'm looking for, self-conscious. I was always a self-conscious person. So, 
whenever I get made fun of, it, it wouldn't help. So I would always just sort of sit in the corner and not bother anybody, but would get picked on. Late middle school, it really wasn't that bad. But high school... High school was the absolute worst. Now that I think about it, early or late middle school was a pretty bad time too. Because <laughs> that was when I got one of the bullies that would flip flop. He'd be a bully, then he'd be okay. And right when you were thinking, okay, he's a he's a pretty decent guy, he'd flip back to being a bully. The biggest bully story I have that really, I think, had the most, the most, the largest effect on this anxiety comes from one door away from my house when I was growing up. My next door neighbors, they were twins. Yeah. You piss one of them off, you're gonna get both in your in your face. So I'm not going to use their names again, but if they ever hear this, they'll know who I'm talking about. Or maybe they won't because I never use my real name on this channel. Huh. Probably should at some point. But, uh, yeah. I remember the very first time, or one of the earliest times, maybe not the very first time, when they started to uh, well, when they started to pick on me, it was just kind of like friendly picking, you know. Hey, you're fat. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I remember. I was over at their house one day. This was when we were friends. I'm doing air quotes there. We were playing a game. I don't know the name of the game. Damn it. That's, that's awful. It was a GameCube game. Uh, I just remember one of them saying something to me. You know, I really should come up with fake names. Hmm. Well, anyway. <laughs> One of them... Uh, we were playing a game, and... He made some comment to me, and... I know it's going to sound like I'm being really defensive here, but... I never insulted them. I would always, at least... If I did, I would make it apparent that I'm joking, like they would with me. But one day, one of them said something, and it it didn't really sound like as much of joking. But he called me a fat ass, and, you know, hey, friends do that all the time, right? <laughs> You'll come to learn that I surround myself with abusive friends. But, oh my god, I sound like such a sappy sap. But, uh... So he made that comment, and I'm like, yeah, well, you're ugly. He hit me in the face. He just took his palm and smacked me in the face with it. And it wasn't like a slap, it wasn't like a smack. He fucking, like, if you're gonna break somebody's nose, he hit me in the side of the face with that. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> and he said, uh, if you're not gonna respect me, then get the fuck out of my house. I'm like, I was joking. So I just sat there with a, for a little bit with a controller in my hand, and I all of a sudden stood up. I don't have to take this. <laughs> like I was in an abusive relationship. <laughs> I don't have to take this. He's like, yeah, then get out. So I did. I left. And let me also say, this is the same guy. Same exact guy who hit me in the back of the head with a giant piece of a cinder block. You know those things? Yeah, that. And this was like a year before this whole thing happened. And he claims it was an accident, and I believed him, but now I'm thinking maybe it wasn't. But yeah, he hit me in the back of the head with a fucking piece of cinder block. And yeah, I had blood. I thought I was going to die, but I didn't die. I almost made a really emo comment there. Huh. So yeah, I 
left his house that day, and ever since then, there was just always this kind of tension between him and his brother and myself. And, oh my god. They teamed up with this guy that was <laughs> teamed up. Yes, it's a it's a Marvel DC thing crossover. That's what that's what it is crossover. <laughs> I don't read comic books, by the way. But uh, yeah, they sort of teamed up with this guy who had gone between being a bully and not being a bully, and he went full bully at that point. And all three of them would fuck with little old me. Hooray. Again, I wouldn't provoke these guys. I would just sit and not do a damn thing. Because, you know, that's the kind of person I was. I just, and still am. I will not talk to anybody anywhere. Ever. <laughs> Unless you're sitting right next to me and we've known each other for a really long time. Or for fucking, that's also a thing. But, uh, But yeah, uh, one of the... It was always on the bus, to and from school. Always. It wouldn't be in the hallways, it wouldn't be in the cafeteria, it was always on the bus. And the way it would normally start is they'd throw something at me. Specifically me. You know why I knew that? Because it would always fucking hit. Now, it started off with, like, pieces of paper. You know, like, if you were trying to get a girl's attention that you liked. But no, I wasn't a girl. Not that I'm aware of. I wasn't a girl, but now I am. <laughs> no, I'm still a man. I'm still a man. But yeah, they'd hit me, and, I'm, and I'd look back at them, and they'd be like, What are you looking at? I'm like, whatever. But yeah. <laughs> but they'd keep doing it, and eventually I got fed up with it, and I'm like, Will you fucking stop? Well, it started off with, Will you please quit? Then it escalated to, Will you fucking stop? And they'd threaten to beat the shit out of me. And I'm like, I don't want to get the shit beaten out of me, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything. Well, then it went from pieces of paper to pieces of pencil to full pencils. And then it went to keys. They threw keys at me. You know, those little hard things that if you hit somebody with it, it's going to hurt like a bitch. In the back of the head. That was when I took a stand, I guess you could say. And uh, I remember I got up and said, okay, who the fuck threw this? And none of them said anything. I guess I had that crazy look in my eye. I don't know. But nobody said anything. I'm like, alright, I'm keeping this. That was when somebody spoke up. <laughs> it was a guy who had been an on-again, off-again bully. You know, that kind of person. If you're into that sort of thing. And I did give the, the keys back to him. I'm not going to be that asshole is you wouldn't be able to get into his house otherwise. And I did, and he's like, yeah, that's what I thought. What? You're the motherfucker who had the audacity to throw shit at the back of my head, hit me with it, and then be all snide and snarky and say, yeah, you better give that back, even though I'm the one who threw it like a little bitch. Yeah, I'm getting a little pissed here, can't you tell? And I lost it. I, I turned around to the guy, I'm like, what? Really? Really? <laughs> of course, not like that. I probably said something a lot worse. <laughs> Imagine that. But, yeah. He was threatening to beat my ass. The other two guys stood up threatening to beat my ass. And I'm like, you know what? Do it. Fucking hit me. I dare you. I looked at all three of them, and I'm like, do it. Come on, do it. None of them did it. And once they realized that 
I was done backing down. I was done being a docile person. They stopped messing with me. They finally stopped. And I'll tell you right now, stuff like that, that's just one set of bullies. I had at least four or five set of bullies in high school, in my later years of high school, mind you. I had more in early middle school and late middle school, early high school. So, I was just happy I had finally stood up to them, you know? And, you know, I think that did help with anxiety a little bit. I felt like a bit, a bit of a badass because I had thwarted the people that were all talk and no hit the shit out of people. I don't know. All bark and no, no bite. That's what I'm looking for. But yeah, I was happy I stood up to them. And if I'm perfectly honest, bullies like that, they were the whole reason I decided to graduate early from high school. Because I did graduate a year early. And I just had to get out of that place. I couldn't take it anymore. It was either get out of there or just kill myself. I wasn't going to take it anymore. Simply because of that. And I was seriously considering just ending my life because of people like that. People like that who I honestly believe have no right to live in the first place. No right to be a thing. Which, this is starting to turn into more of a rant than a hey, I have anxiety, come and listen to my stories kind of thing. So yeah, I guess that's the end of that bully story, kind of. There's still bits and pieces to it, like the fact that they would always pick fights with one of my quote-unquote friends. Oh, goodness, that's another story. But yeah, I think that's where I'll end this story. So yeah. Again, anxiety, it's a real thing. If you don't think it is, you're wrong. I'm sorry, I don't normally just say, you're wrong, but in this case, you're dead wrong. So, anxiety is a real thing, and, you know, it's kind of helping with mine to be talking about it openly like this to complete strangers on the internet, and if it's helping you, that's great. If it's not helping you, great. <laughs> but, you know, if you want to, you can tell me your stories, and we can continue to share experiences, and all that good stuff. I mean, also... Check out my other videos. <laughs> you know, all that good stuff. But anyway, yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening anyway.